My name is Kevin Matthews. I'm a professor of history at George Mason University. My doctorate was about the Irish partition and as it developed about how it affected British politics in the 20th century. And the person that seems to keep popping up or seemed to keep popping up all the time was Winston Churchill. There are not that many studies about Churchill and Ireland and so I've been working for several years now on a book length study about Churchill and Ireland and how Ireland affected him and how he affected Ireland. You, you would think that someone who is perhaps the most famous Englishman in the world would say that his first memories are of England, of where he was born at Blenheim Palace or where his parents lived in London, but the strange thing is his first memories in life are of Ireland because his parents were working over there for his uh, grandfather. And so he's had a long, strong connection with Ireland. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of research, but um, right now I'm looking for a publisher. Every March I am often invited to give talks on the Irish Revolution, which again is a subject that we Americans don't realize is much more complicated and has many more sides to it than people realize. So you have figures like Michael Collins, um, who created modern urban guerrilla warfare. Um, people like Arthur Griffith, who create the counter-state and the idea of, of non-violent resistance that would be taken up by Mahatma Gandhi in, uh, in India. And uh, one of the things I like about those talks uh, are that people often come to them with uh, different expectations, but once I get into the talks, they really seem to enjoy them. They seem to um, be surprised at all the uh, things that, that have happened in Ireland or happened in Ireland in the 1920s for Ireland to become an independent country, and sadly, a partitioned country. I went to Ireland for the first time in 1985. I was working for a newspaper in Rome. I left Rome, went to London, and eventually made my way to Ireland. Several friends I'd met in Rome said, if you're ever in Ireland, we'll be glad to put you up. So I went to Dublin, and then I went to Belfast. And this was in the middle of the Troubles. It wasn't as bad as it was in the 70s, but it was still bad. It's the only time I've ever really been physically frightened in my life. Because you would walk past a car and you didn't know if it had a bomb in it. The city center was ringed by security checkpoints and fences and things like that. And I think if you encounter something like that for the first time, it has an impact on you. If you're walking up a street and you see soldiers patrolling the streets and women rock walking by with baby carriages. You can see that on the news. I saw the news growing up in the 70s. But to see it for real is different. I was um, walking back to where I was staying and I was walking past the street and it was a, a very, very rundown uh, neighborhood. I don't know what community it was, Catholic or Protestant. And uh, it looked like something out of a Dickensian novel. And so I took a photograph. I was going to take a photograph of it. And I had, I was holding the camera up and I felt this little hand tugging my coat. I looked down and this little girl was standing there. I didn't know where she came from. And she said, Meester, take my picture. Like she never had a picture taken before. And um, another little friend of hers came over and so I took their photograph. And uh, they wanted to know where I was from. And I said, oh, I'm from Kentucky. And I said, have you ever heard of Kentucky? No, I never heard of Kentucky. You ever heard of Kentucky Fried Chicken? Oh yeah, they heard of Kentucky Fried Chicken. The only thing my native state is famous for. And so I left and I heard these little footsteps behind me. And these little girls were skipping behind me and I said, where are you going? And they said, we want to go to Kentucky with you, mister. And we got to this intersection and um, I had to cross the intersection for, to get on my bus. And I guess they'd been told by their parents, that's where your neighborhood ends. That's where the safety zone ends for you. And so they didn't cross the street. They just stood there. And those little girls stood there watching me until I got on that bus and left. And they even watched the bus until I couldn't see them anymore. 
And I started thinking, I could enter and leave their world, but they're stuck there. And it was 1985, I don't know what ever happened to them. I got back to the States eventually and got the film developed. And one of the strangest things about this photograph is that the little girl who came over, it's a little girl in a photograph. The other little girl that tugged on my coat, it's not a photograph of her. She is looking at you. She's observing you. And it got me thinking, why are these children in this world? Why are they stuck in this world? And I never had any intentions of doing anything beyond just looking into the Irish conflict. And now 40 years later, that's what my career is all about. And it's partly because of them.